Hello guys, welcome to GGI Geospatial Solutions Training. Today we are going to talk about the ground control points and the checkpoints. So this is the content of this course. So first we will talk about what is GCP and CP. So how to preset it on the ground and the operation in post processing. Okay, let's get started. Uh, so first question, what is GCP? GCP refers to ground control point. Uh, someone might call it the benchmark. It is being pre-settled on the ground, used to accurately measure and locate ground features in aero photogrammetry measurements. It can improve the accuracy and the robustness of aero triangulation, and check the accuracy of aero triangulation, convert the aero triangula triangulation results to the specific GCP co coordinate systems, and improve the accuracy of the reconstruction results. But uh, there are something you might uh, need to know. So we should award uh, awarding all GCP be located in the same elevation plan. A certain drop can help improve the accuracy and uh, place them in a relatively open area to be ensured that its visibility from virus angle in the air. And what is CP? CP refers to checkpoint. It also means uh, pre-settled on the ground, used to verify and uh, assess error photogrammetry measurement accuracy. By comparing the measurement results with the actual position of the checkpoints, the accuracy and reliability of the error photogrammetry measurements can be evaluated. The use of checkpoints can help to ensure the accuracy of the measurements and provides quality control for the measurement process. And there are something that uh, we might to note. First is the GCP and the CP, they need to be placed on flat ground or road surface. And GCP and the CP have the same appearance and can be converted to each other in some cases. Third, in the photogrammetry workflow, CP is used to check the accuracy of plan and elevation. But in LiDAR workflow, CP can only check the elevation accuracy. And let's go to the second part, it's pre-settled on the ground. Uh, you can, first, you can use in the existing landmarks on the ground, such as the zebra crossing, zebra marking, or ground road sign, arrows, etc., to make it a, a GCP or CP. And secondly, you can set up your own GCP and CP. Uh, you can either choose in placing a physical target sign or paper on the ground, or you could uh, use paint to brush the GCP-CP into L-shaped or other target shapes, etc. Just like the picture we showed. So you can either choose the inner corner or the outer corner, so it really depends on you. Uh, and by the way, in the LiDAR workflow, so in order to check the elevation accuracy and the penetration effect, in dense vegetation environments, in, 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 in addition to set CPs on flat grounds, CP will also need to be settled inside the vegetation. You can set them under the tree or in the middle of the grass, just like uh, the pictures we showed in this screen. So you can, under the trees, you can measure one point and you can also put your RDK rover inside the grass or, or some plants. Uh, but in this case, uh, you don't need to place or paint the physical sign. Just measure the X, Y, Z uh, data and do the comparison in the office. Because it's very hard to place a sign or, or target inside the grass, right? And um, there are some questions. First one, how many GCP CP should we set up in a civilian area? So regardless of the size of the measurement area, so usually we recommended uh, more than five points will be great. And uh, you can you also need to take into account factors such as the layout cost and time. So basically, the more the better. But you should uh, take in some other factors 
um, for example, the layout cost and time. Second question, how to distribute throughout the entire serene area? So basically, we need to distribute evenly throughout the entire serene area to ensure that there are sufficient GCP and CP at the beginning and at the middle. So I have uh, attached some uh, picture that uh, I want to show to you. So in, for example, in this picture, you can see uh, the red cross has shown the GCP's location, so it's evenly separated in the whole area. And the same as this one. Uh, okay, and uh, there's a road uh, environment you can see at the beginning, in the middle, at the end of the road. So we can we all placed uh, the GCP or CP, and there are some points. There are more points uh, on the uh, near the trees or near the plants. And how about this picture? As we can see, uh, there are enough points at the top, in the middle, and in the left. But uh, how about in the right corner? There is no GCP or CP. Should we place some GCP CP here? It will really depends. If there is a road uh, that can go there and it really takes uh, less time, so if you are convenient to go there, yes, uh, that will be great if you place some points here. But if there is no road to go there and it, it will take like hours or even days for you to get there and there is no uh, places that you can place the uh, target or uh, to the to the paint that uh, will be uh, useless and uh, we are not recommend this. So like we uh, said, we have to take some factors into account. So for example, the layout cost and the time. So if there's no points uh, here, but we already got uh, like nine points, it, it will be great for this project. Another question is how to accurately obtain the value of GCP and CP. So firstly, we should uh, know and it's very important to know that the GCP and CP are the benchmarks that we use to adjust and check the accuracy errors of the error serene results. So these themselves require a high precision and a high reliability results. This is very important. And we suggest using the high precision serene equipment such as total station, GPS, or even digital level for the serene to get their uh, X, Y, Z uh, coordinate. But for digital level, it can only for only useful for the elevation. And since RTK can usually achieve an accuracy of one to two centimeters and uh, due to its higher flexibility in use, so it's recommended first. But if condition permits, so the total station and the leveling can also be used to strive for higher accuracy results. Okay, next question. How to use RTK to obtain better measurements results? This is a very uh, important question too. So like we have mentioned, uh, normally, the RDK can achieve an accuracy of 1 to 2 centimeters, but in some extreme situations, its accuracy might become very poor. So if we use the poor results as a benchmark without recognition, and it will have an incorrect impact to our final results. So how should we do? First, we should do the pre-inspection. So before we use RDK devices, we check whether the level bubble of the RTK pool is accurate or not. So if there are some deviation, so it needs to be calibrated. So how can we do this? How can we calibrate the level bubbles? So we lift the RTK pool vertically and let it stand still. So like the picture we showed in the right, so we use a, uh, we, we use, uh, we use a, uh, line to drag it up and make it still. So due to the gravity, uh, the level bubbles should be centered, right? Should be centered. And if the bubble is skewed, is, is skewed, 
adjust it by twisting the three, uh, the, the three screws at the bottom that uh, can make it back to the center. So for example, if the uh, bubble is offset by five millimeter in the middle of the pole, so, so the impact on the face center of the RDK antenna at the top might reach to eight to 10 millimeters. And uh, of course, as the usage time prolongs, so there might will be more or less deviation. So the first step, we check the bubbles will be very important step. So please remember to do it. And after we have checked the bubbles, so during the serene work in the field, so make sure uh, you collect or survey as at least 10 times at each GCP or CP that we can use uh, after uh, we, can, we, we could use these values uh, in the office to take in the average to make it as one value. So if you are not sure whether there's a problem with the bubbles or there's other way you can do. So for example, you can always maintaining one orientation. For example, you can facing north or facing south when marrying it so that if there are some arrows, the arrow will be always shift in one direction. So in this way, a noticeable offset can be detected during the final accuracy check. So for example, like uh, I uh, attached the two pictures here. So if the bubble is uh, has some problem and it has a, a shift to the left, uh, uh, sorry, to the right. So make sure every time you measure this uh, focus, uh, facing with one direction. For example, you're facing the sun or facing the north. And in the final result, you will find a um, fixed uh, orientation or fixed uh, deviation with the final result. That is very uh, is easy to notice this. Or when you're collecting a single GCP or CP, so you, can, you collect multiple times in different directions then you can take the average value as the final result then to make sure that there is no uh, error caused by the bubble. Okay, next step. Um, after we finish the field serene in the, in the field, when we back to office, so we recommend it to use the RDK controller or the post-processing software to export the full amount of data with information such as the accuracy of each point uh, when married. So in this way, if we find an issue with accuracy with, uh, analysis, we can also trace the source afterwards and find the true reason. For example, uh, in this, uh, in this uh, Excel sheet, so you can see there's I target RD, uh, North, East, and Z uh, coordinate, and even we got the uh, horizontal accuracy and the vertical accuracy. So let's take a look of the point 10 to point 13. So these four points we can see during the survey in the field. So their vertical accuracy is pretty bad, around five to six centimeters. So assuming a possible sc scenarios. So if, 10, uh, if uh, the point 10 to 13, we use it to check the accuracy of the point cloud, and we might find that the error is bad, it, so error is so big, then we can be inferred that the accuracy of the point cloud is poor. But the real situation is the accuracy of the points when the merit is bad. It's, uh, the, uh, the error is from the points when married, is not with the point cloud. So in this way, we can trace the source and uh, to find the real reason. So, but if you don't know this, you, you just believe these points are with very high accuracy and uh, after the accuracy check, so the point cloud accuracy will be bad. So this is very important. And after the uh, checking and the preparation so we can go to the operations in post-processing. 
So let's uh, review the GCP function. So it can improve the accuracy and the robustness of, of error triangulation. It can check the accuracy of error triangulation and convert the error triangulation results to the specific uh, GCP coordinate system. And it can also improve the accuracy of the reconstruction results. So in the photogrammetry workflows, uh, there's a process called GCP mark. And uh, I have, uh, so this is uh, how it works. So the first is we, the recommended process. We import the image and GCP. So we do the error triangulation and then we do the GCP mark. So it can optimize the results of error triangulation. So after that, we confirm the accuracy. If this is good, we could go on with the reconstruction. And if, if the post accuracy is very high, we could uh, uh, directly do the GCP mark and uh, do the optimize of a, uh, error triangulation, confirm the accuracy, and do the reconstruction. So GCP mark is pretty important in the photogrammetry workflow. But uh, how will this be carried out? How, uh, what exactly the operation will we will we need to do need to be done? Okay, I have uh, make a video and to show it to you. Actually, in DJI Terra, is uh, is kind of intelligent. It it supports the auto GCP mark in DJI Terra. So our end users it just need to manually mark GCP in one image. The Terra will automatically mark the remaining images. So let's see the video. For example, we enter the GCP management and we import the GCP, right? And uh, okay, also GCP has been here. We do the import. Okay, you can see the GCP has been uh, listed here. So we choose one, one point as a uh, one point. Okay, you can see actually the position is kind of uh, accurate. But if you are not satisfied, you can mark them by yourself manually. But remember, just need one photo. You can you can just need to mark one photo. Okay, let's see this video. Point there one. You can see we click. See, all the, the the rest of the photo has been automatically marked, and there's auto here. So you can switch to another point, like the point eight. Okay, we mark the once again. So you can see. The rest of the photo will be automatically marked, and you can check one them one by one, so the position is equally the same. And we go to the number nine, so we okay mark them one, so the rest of them will be automatically marked. So this is very convenient for us to use. And after this, the reprojection error is also showed in the right, so just for uh for the reference, so it's pretty easy. And um, in the quality report, so we also provide the GCP error reports uh, to you just for your reference. So uh, like the picture we listed here, so there's a summary of the GCP error. Uh, it shows the RMSE, uh, so the 3D error, uh, vertical error, and horizontal error. And there are also the details for each GCP, uh, 102, 108, and 11, uh, and uh, 110. So for each GCP, what's the what's the detailed situation? We all listed here. So just for your reference. And for the CP, for the checkpoint, we also provide this uh, uh, re report. So you can see on the checkpoint side, we also provide the RMSE with 3D vertical horizontal, and for each checkpoint. So it's very convenient. So if you believe this error is okay, and you can start with the 2D and the 3D reconstruction. So okay, this is a photogrammetry workflow. And how about the LiDAR workflow? How it works in LiDAR? So like we said, the, uh, the GCP and CB can improve the point cloud accuracy check too. And uh, but. Remember, it can only help in elevation side. So the GCP, it, we can it, uh, call it the elevation control point, and uh, the CP, we can call it the elevation checkpoint. Uh, and in LiDAR workflow, we do, it don't require the GCP mark operation. Uh, we don't need to click the the, the points uh, on on the software. It 
just don't need this workflow. And it also supports importing uh, the elevation checkpoints, uh, the CP, and to obtain the elevation accuracy by comparing the average high difference between the checkpoint and the point cloud nearby. So we Im it can improve the accuracy of the point cloud elevation through import the GCP. Okay, let's see how it works. Uh, first, the average high difference is shown in the report and can be imported into DJI Terror to, to improve the accuracy. So like we uh, showed here, so uh, after the uh, comparison, so you can see the average uh, attitude difference is minus 3 centimeters, as shown here. So if we, are, if we are not satisfied with this, so we can use the height offset we input the three centimeters here. So after the uh, height offsets correction, so you can see the accuracy on elevation side has been greatly improved. Okay, this is manually, uh, we, we do it manually. And the Terra also supports we using a specific GCP to overall correct the elevation coordinate of the whole point cloud. So we can do uh, choosing the accuracy, control and check, we choose one GCP to uh, correct the elevation side um, on, on, one G, on one GCP. Okay, and the next I will show you some screenshot and to just give you an idea how, uh, how, how this works and uh, what's uh, going on uh, in the point cloud side. So the point cloud accuracy check, it can check and improve the data accuracy, how it works. So we can check the elevation difference with point cloud. Uh, so this is a screenshot using the certified software. We do it in cross-section mode. You can see the blue one is the checkpoint, is the checkpoint position. And the brown one is the point cloud. So <coughs> we could do a measurement here uh, from the checkpoint to the middle of the point cloud. So the elevation difference is around 1.7 centimeter. Yeah, it, it, it's pretty well. So the, uh, the a uh, accuracy is, is very high. So this is a comparison uh, with the point cloud. And we can also do the elevation check with the DEM. So this is the checkpoint position and we do a measurement to the DEM is because DEM is kind of serene results. So it's more uh, useful than the point cloud. So the elevation difference is go to 2.3 centimeters. Yeah, it, it is also pretty well. So same point, 103 and 103. Yes, same point here. Okay, and uh, I I don't know whether you remember uh, previously that we, 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 we said we need some points under the trees to see the penetration results, to see the accuracy. Yes, let, let's see how, how it works. And we measure about one point under the trees, you can see. So we make a cross section here. Uh, where's the checkpoint? Yeah, here. This blue one is the position of the checkpoint. So we can see <coughs> the penetration results is pretty well, so you can see there are lots of points on the ground. Uh, so, so the brown one is the ground points. So pre pretty well, but this is kind of hard to tell what's the accuracy. So let's zoom in. Okay, uh, this is a enlarged a screenshot. You can see this is a checkpoint position and uh, we measure it to a, a closest point cloud. So you can see the elevation difference is four centimeter. Yeah, it, 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 it's pretty well, especially if we consider this is under the tree, the conditions, right? And uh, there's another site we measure one point in the in a very tall grass here. This is using the trimble item, so we measure one point on the on the grass. So also we make a cross section here. So this is the checkpoint, and we measure the distance uh, between the checkpoint and the point cloud. So the elevation difference is eight centimeters. Yeah, it, it, it's pretty well uh, considering the, this is a very hard situation. Okay, uh, this is the uh, end of this course. So hoping this is for you. Uh, we talk about the GCP and the CP and uh, 
So when and so next time when you go to the field to carry out the string work to make sure following our uh, menu or following the workflow uh, and uh, wish you have a better accuracy during your job. Okay, this is it. Uh, and uh, let's see you in other courses. Bye.